Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today I am here to answer the very important question, should you buy Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or Pokemon Shining Pearl? Now, I know at this stage some of you might not be interested in buying either of the games, Although I would question why you clicked on this video. Please don't go though. I'm delighted to have you here. We can still have some fun. So we're not going to be discussing whether you should buy the games or not. By now most of you have probably made your mind up. I am here to discuss whether you should get Diamond or Pearl. And what the differences between them are. Because I did this video for Sword and Shield. And it turned out to be the third most popular video on the entire channel. Seems like it would be folly not to do it for this as well. Now, one thing I do need to point out is that the differences between Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are less pronounced than the differences between Sword and Shield. In Sword and Shield, you had different Pokemon, as are always the case. But in Sword and Shield, you actually literally had different gym leaders and gyms, depending on which game you actually chose, which is pretty important, quite frankly. So when you ended up over in Stow on side, if you had Pokemon Sword, you would end up fighting against B and her fighting gym to get the fighting badge. But if you went Pokemon Shield, you would be up against Alistair going against his ghost Pokemon for the ghost badge. Then when you, you ended up in Sir Chester, you would on Pokemon Sword be fighting Gordy and his rock Pokemon for the rock badge. Whereas in Pokemon Shield, you'd be fighting Melanie and her Ice Pokemon for the Ice Badge. And this is pretty gosh darned important. There were actual different gym leaders, as well as all the Pokemon differences. As it stands at the moment, and maybe something more will be revealed later, but as it stands at the moment, the differences in terms of the versions here come down to the Pokemon. Now, obviously, you've got the box legendaries. If you want Dialga, you have to go for Brilliant Diamond. And if you want Palkia, you have to go for Shining Pearl. For me, honestly, that is enough to make me go through Brilliant Diamond. Palkia is not as cool as Dialga. I feel pretty confident saying that. But it turns out that literally 10 minutes, and I mean literally 10 minutes before I started recording this video... Pokemon went and revealed a new feature of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, that being Romanus Park. And in Romanus Park, you can go and find yourself a whole bunch of legendary and mythical Pokemon. And it varies depending on the game. So, for instance, in Brilliant Diamond, you can get Ho-Oh from Pokemon Gold as well as the legendary beast trio of Raikou, Entei, and Suicune from Gold and Silver. But then equivalently, you can go over to Shining Pearl, and you can get yourself Lugia, which is from Pokemon Silver, and then the legendary bird trio Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres coming around from Red and Blue. So for some of you, this is going to be it. Because these are the exciting Pokemon, right? A lot of the other Pokemon I'm going to tell you about, these are smaller Pokemon and less... Well, they're, I mean, they're not mythical and legendary Pokemon. These are a set of four legendary Pokemon that can only be gotten in either Shining Pearl or Brilliant Diamond. For what it's worth, they did actually then reveal a couple of others that can be got by linking games. So, for instance, you can get Mew by linking Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. And you can get Jirachi by linking Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield. So, some proper mythical Pokemon there, which is lovely. So, for some of you, this is going to be the decision. Now, for me, it's... I want them all. Now, I should say, full disclosure, I went and just ordered a double pack with a steel book because I'm a gigantic Pokemon nerd, as most of you by now will probably know. However, there's still the question of which one I play through first. And honestly, it was going to be Brilliant Diamond, but then I really kind of want the legendary birds, but then I want Ho-Oh, I might just have to play through them. But literally, this news that came down 10 minutes before I started recording may well end up being the big decider for a whole bunch of you as to which game to go for. Brilliant Diamond, 
you've got yourself ho -Oh with the Legendary Beast Trio. And Shining Pearl, you've got yourself Lugia with the Legendary Bird Trio. So it seems like we've not got... I mean, for instance, there was a Town Slash Forest that changed in black and white. But that's not happening here. We've got gyms that changed in Sword and Shield. But that's not happening here. So we've got the box legendaries. We've now got these legendaries in terms of what's happening in that new park. What else have we got? Well, it's not yet been confirmed, but it is incredibly likely, and I mean incredibly likely, that we are going to see the same version exclusive Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as we got in regular diamond and regular pearl now what i will do when the games come out and this is confirmed one way or another i will pin a comment to the top of this comment section to let you know but it certainly seems like that would be a sensible thing so and shout out to the lovely joe over at cerebi.net for providing this list for us but over in pokemon diamond we've got ourselves seal and Jugal, that little lovely evolution line cyber and sizzle that lovely evolution line Murkrow and Honchkrow, that's another revolution line, bearing in mind they're from different gens, which is why they're slightly far apart in the Pokedex. We've got the line of Larvitar, Pupitar, and Tyranitar, and you've got to love yourself some Tyranitar. We've got Poochina and Mightyena, Aaron, Laron, and Agron, and given that my middle name is Aaron, I have always been a huge fan of this particular Pokemon line. We've got Kecleon, Kranidos, and Rampados. Stunky and Skuntank, and then of course the aforementioned Dialga, which I, I think is pretty gosh darn fair. Over in Pokemon Pearl, we've got yourself Slowpoke and Slowbro, and then obviously Slowking to make a lovely trio with them. They are all in the same evolution line. We've got ourselves Pinsir, we've got Mistrevious and Miss Magius, Houndour and Houndoom, Stantler. The line of Sveal, Celio, and Woolrain. Now, we do have Bagon, Shelgon, and Salamence, which is a great stage 2 line. So, that is honestly making me a little bit jealous. If I do go Brilliant Diamond, this will be one of the ones I miss from Shining Pearl. This is pretty sweet. You've then got Shieldon and Bastiodon, Glamiao and Perugly. And, of course, the aforementioned Palkia. So, for me, personally, when you bring in Dialga, along with the Agron and Tyranitar lines, that is enough for me. The only line from Pearl that's really going to make me jealous I'm not getting it is the Salamence line. But I'm going to have Tyranitar and Agron, so I probably am going to get over it one day. Now, there is every possibility that Pokemon are being brought in from subsequent generations, as in from Gen 5 and onwards, and that some of these will end up being version exclusives in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but this is so far unconfirmed and likely to be more of an endgame thing, although again, we don't know. So for now, let's stick to the list. I do think it is very fair to assume that the exclusives are going to stay from Diamond to Brilliant Diamond and Pearl to Shining Pearl, but I don't think we should really go too far away from that. So essentially, you've got your Box Legendary, your other exclusive Pokemon, and now those exclusive Legendary Pokemon in that new park. For me, it is Brilliant Diamond. I have made my decision. It is going to be Brilliant Diamond, and it is the version exclusives, although it's largely Dialga, I'll be honest with you. But that is the decision. It's not like it is in some other games with different cities or forests, Gen 5, or different gym leaders, Gen 8. It is a little bit more subdued, but if there is a particular Pokemon that you want to catch and put in your party and all of that, hopefully now you know which version to pick. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I, for one, am delighted. I will be playing through both of them eventually, but I think I now know which one to start on. Obviously, I would love to hear from you guys at this point which version you're going to go for and, of course, why you're going to go for that version. Which of these exclusive Pokemon is going to sway you one way or the other? Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. 
If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.